I think your documentary is going to be huge in so many ways. It's so interesting because you have a behind the scenes look of what all the people we grew up around, uh, you know, whether it's a Leonardo DiCaprio and a Baltazar Getty and a David Arquette and, I mean, how were we not hanging out together at that I, time? We were kids, I, friends when we were I kids. Don't, I don't know how we weren't together. I have no idea, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know, like one minute I'm like, oh, there's Corey Feldman and Alfonso Ribeiro, and then I'm like, wait, there's Arquette and like, Balt. Uh, it's so, so much love throughout. It was so great to be able to sit down and talk to my dear friends who I grew up with, Brian Green and Stephen Dorff and, you know, and all of these childhood friends, Balthazar Getty, who of course is like still my family. I mean, these, these really, these, these friendships are, are more like family than, than anything. So many of the people that have been lost and, and are no longer with us are also in the documentary, like Rodney Harvey. Uh, oh my gosh, Rodney, Rodney, Rodney oh, Harvey. Rodney, oh. And then of course, friends like Jonathan Brandis, who was such a big part of my life and, and then passed away so young, and Justin Pierce, and just all of these amazing people that were such important, pivotal parts of my life. Yeah, the documentary really shows the journey of you know, where these people were at before they were taken away from us. And people do not have that window like you had. Yeah. So it's really extraordinary to be a fly on the wall and see these people, but that you do it without frivolity. You do it with a very thought provoking writer director's lens of asking yourself, you know, are we aware of what our friends are going through? I agree a thousand percent. And the realization in watching these videos back, you know, I remembered our lives being so full of life and love and joy. And then I had lost some of my best friends so early on. And so I always wondered if things had happened the way I remembered them. And I think it was almost a subconscious thing that I locked it all away in a vault and didn't open it for decades. And then watching the tapes back and realizing how many of us were going through different stages of pain and not seeing it. And, and, and something that really rings so true to me is that there was an authentic love between us. Do you know what I mean? That we really did have these very deep relationships. And I think that was one of the reasons that the losses were felt so deeply because these weren't superficial relationships. These were people that, that there was the, these deep connections with. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's perspective. That's a perspective I can get behind. I just, I love it. Uh, but yeah. Oh, here's a weird one. You, uh, <laughs> your, your boyfriend from House of Pain, I remember going out on a date with Eric Everlast. You did? Yes, and he put a cassette tape in my car. Um, oh, that's so hot. And played the song that was their new single, and it was Jump Around! Ah! Okay, that is, I mean, that is a really slick move. I mean, Eric, that, I mean, that's a very cool move. <laughs> Play the new, the, the new demo. <laughs> well, it's so funny. So here, so oh, we would have hung out together because I like know. Danny and Ever, I mean, that we, that we would have been like the power, uh, the power uh, double couple. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> e Eric and I went on like one date and one date only, but I remember him playing this demo tape for me and I was like, this song is gonna be an anthem. Big, <laughs> I love it. You know, it's, it's so amazing. And I, I think about friends like Michael Rappaport who, who, and Brian and just how many, of my old friends have been so supportive throughout this project. The amazing Leo, whom I love so much with, with all my heart, you know, and, and just the ways in which friends have rallied around has been just such an inspiration to me. And I met Leonardo DiCaprio through none other than Sarah Gilbert, who's also of course, Sarah Gilbert, right there in the documentary. I love Sarah so much. One of my favorite moments is when she's like, oh, you're gonna have so many hours of boring footage on that video camera. It's 
one of my all-time favorite moments. And then the incredible Linda Perry, who did such an incredible, beautiful score, whom I love so much. Yeah, your documentary opens up with Pearl Jam, like Eddie Vedder. I mean, my, it's... My, my friend Eddie and Jill came, came in, and I mean, just amazing artist. And Trent Reznor, you know, gave us a song, and Cranberries. I mean, really everyone rallied around and it was so incredible to see that support and of course the incredible Sean who has just been amazing throughout. Well, I really did live such a parallel life to yours and and we were, you know, God, we were at the White House at the same time, probably yeah. doing I mean, Just Say right? No campaigns. Totally, completely. And by the way, for the record, I did the Just Say No dr to Drugs campaign. It was before I was partying. I mean, everyone's like, were you partying? And the, I was like, no, I was, I, it was a few years later. <laughs> I had partied, was not partying, and then went back to partying. But like, we were but, kicking it with the Reagans at the White yes, House. Yes, completely. I remember like my mom losing me and finding me, and I was like literally hanging out in the Oval Office with my like legs up. Like, I mean, not that, did, that did not come out right. I had my feet <laughs> kicked up, and I was eating like, I was eating fried chicken because like my mom couldn't find me. Also, you have a Punky Brewster reboot, which is so fun. Punky Power Forever, the Punky Brewster reboot has been, I, mean, I don't wanna say reboot, I call it a continuation because it doesn't feel like a reboot, it feels like a continuation. And it's that superhero that I love to lean into, the Punky within all of us. And all 10 episodes of the new Continued Punky Brewster <laughs> are streaming now on Peacock. Oh, I love you so much. I love you so much. Thank you for giving everyone Thank this you. incredible window into your journey that everyone watching is going to marvel at. It's Kid 90, it's streaming exclusively now on Hulu. I love you. <laughs>